Hello, future millionaires, and welcome back to the Get Rich Slow podcast. I am your co-host, Adrian Shermer, joined with my fellow co-host, Robert Delavan. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Adrian. How are you doing today? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. I'm glad this heat wave is over. Uh, we hit record temps over here oh, uh, where we're recording in the Portland, Oregon area. Our previous record was, was it 108, I think? Yeah, 108. Like ever, 109. ever, ever 108. Right. Right. 115 116 we hit depending mm -hmm. on where the, the temperature was taken yeah uh so like insane that. record heats and now it's a i'm so glad to see clouds i never thought i'd say that but i'm really stoked um it's anyway. a it's a it's a balmy balmy what 87 yesterday? yeah yeah it's a real awesome. it's a chilly day i had um uh, had to put my sweater on there so you go. today um, uh we're gonna chew into a pretty interesting subject and it's all about uh you know doing improvements and modifying your home. And this is something that we're gonna have a few more episodes with as well. We've got an interior designer who's already slotted to come in with us, but um, we're gonna start kind of with a preface here. And uh, this is gonna be one where it's great if you can take a look at the video, but we're gonna do a nice audio description as well. But don't forget, we've got a YouTube. Um, we do record uh, ourselves as we record this. So there's a video that goes along. Um, and then occasionally, like in this episode, there's gonna be some pictures. I think we'll be able to host some of these up on the website, um, but uh, looking at these images will help kind of bring the, the story together. But Rob, right. why don't you go ahead and lead us on? So uh, the idea today is you don't make expensive mistakes, right? And it all comes back That's to this concept. concept of, hey, I wish I would have known that before I started. You know, the things, the, the whole idea of this podcast, the Get Rich Slow podcast is the things we wish they taught us in school, the things they wish um, the professionals, you know, uh, could convey without us having to live and learn, which live and learn is kind of expensive. So a little pricey. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. So um, the scenario, let me paint a picture for, for the audience is I just recently listed a house for sale. Um, super cool guy. His name's Ben. Um, I won't give last names and all that sort of thing because of uh, privacy reasons, but a uh, super nice guy. And he wanted to list his house. He's moving out of state and needed to list his house. Uh, he needed to sell it. The market's super hot. Uh, we started having the conversation in May and he'd done a whole bunch of things to his house. He'd lived there for 10, 12 years, done a bunch of improvements over the years. It still though was like a late nineties house with carpet in the master bedroom. Uh, and you, you know, just kind of those sorts of things. The carpet had been, you know, like replaced more than once, but they'd never, you know, spent the money to do some different things. Mm. Uh, the value of this home was on the low end, if you did basically nothing to it, was 600000 That's what we were valuing at. It's a almost 3,000 square foot home in Beaverton, Beaverton area of Oregon, um, home of Nike, close to Intel, all that yeah. for our national audience. Big campuses uh, out there. A great, <clears throat> you know, great neighborhood. Um, the road is a slightly, slightly busy street. We were going to do some mild adjustments, like in the 5% range for that, but it's a really big lot. He has a gate on it. So you could actually, you know, have the gate open and then go down and, and the house is set off the road. So it's kind of mitigated so that it's like 5% or less adjustment at the low end. It was 600, um, the high end, it was 650 and that's without doing total renovations, new construction. New construction, um, you know, it'd be closer to like seven, maybe even 725. Um, but this was, you know, a 90s home and um, very nice and very move in ready. But the issue became like, okay, so where do you want to be? Do you want to be at 600? Do you want to be at 650? And usually what ends up is the sweet spot and appraised value was going to be in the 625 range. We targeted 625. And the reason we targeted 625 is he figured, if he did the things that we recommended, which were what he could do in a short time frame, which was replace carpet, they had pets and, you know, they lived on the carpet for a long time, paint and do a few and then like pressure wash the house, clean the roof, do gutter, you know, clean out gutters, um, mow, blow, landscape. They had to do a railing on their, um, on their deck, which they didn't have because it didn't meet code. Um, just those sorts of things. He has a nephew that was a contractor. Um, we use some of our contractors um, to, to fill in the holes, different things. He was able to, in about a month and a half, like I said, we started talking in June, late May, early June, something like that. 
And we were able to list the house by uh, July, uh, I want to say we went live July 7th, 8th, something like that. And he was able to get a whole bunch of work done. And he spent about ten, twelve thousand $12,000 getting all those things done. Is that time and, still there? Sorry, I, I missed the math. How many months uh, are we so, talking? So it, it basically took him about five, six weeks. Okay. Um, and he spent about ten dollars to $12,000, give or take. And that got him to six twenty-five. dollars Okay. Just by doing paint and doing different things. Here's the hard part. Um, we could have gotten him to 650 at no extra cost if he hadn't made some of the mistakes that he made and hadn't been under the gun. So yeah. th this is where I'm going to share a screen here. And for our audience, we'll describe this, but Adrian, you should be able to see a photo here. Um, yeah. It's of a kitchen. I already see at least um, one glaring issue that I um, always bite my tongue on this. Yep. Yep. Right there. Mm -hmm. There you go. So um, anyway, uh, I mean, describe as a non-real estate so person. Beautiful. This, uh, this is an open concept. I'm guessing that's a living room to the right or dining room. Correct. Correct. Living room. Correct. Living room. Um, yeah. So there's a nice big open room. There's plenty of windows on one side of the house here. We got the kitchen, mm -hmm. um, a glass uh, on the cabinets. Uh, we got the bar and everything. And mm -hmm. then you've got a little nook uh, with the door there. So maybe you could fit a, a you know, a little breakfast uh, table there. Um, and then as you get to the living room, it's, it's so clear that it's the living room because there is a hard line in this hardwood floor, a beautiful light wood to the left of this image where the kitchen is. And then right. the living room is bisected out by this. Um, what do they call that uh, strip it's, there? It's basically a transition strip. A transition and strip, for yeah. our listening audience, it is white oak finish on the left. And it is a laminate flooring, like a wood-like finish, but it's a little darker, almost like a cherry finish um, on the right in the living room yet the space is all open and there's a transition strip on the floor. And here's the thing. A long one. It's well done. Absolutely. Like, yeah. The craftsmanship I, I mean, is... from a, from a standpoint mm -hmm. of craftsmanship, super clean line, it fit, it was solid. You weren't going to scuff your feet. They, they did it to level or reasonably level. The floors were slightly off level, but it was very minimal. Um, it's safe. It meets code, all of that. But now you have two different kinds of floor. One is hardwood that would have been 10 to $12 a square foot to lay and refinish all as one seamlessly. And then you have a you know, 200 square foot uh, living room that obviously has $3 a square foot uh, cost um, flooring on it and a transition right in the middle. And this is supposed to be open concept. So I'm going to go to the next slide I, I just transitioned over there yeah. to the uh to the living room and it looks great and it's one of those things that the room by itself is great the floor by itself was great but mm -hmm. you have two different kinds of flooring i mean it just looks kitschy right yeah and the problem is not um, that it's a it's a cheaper floor material right it's, sure. it's that's not the call out that we're making here you can use cheaper well, materials and still have a premium experience it is right you do get more when you when you put the premium in right so, so there's two ways that this could have gone, right? Is mm -hmm. tear out the 10 to $12 a square foot stuff and put the three to $4 a square foot stuff throughout. And at this price point, totally could have got away with it and would have upped the value by 10, $15,000 of the house. Or flip side, um, run the 10 to $12 a square foot in there. And I mean, the difference would have been, you know, roughly at 200 square feet, I mean, that's expensive. Um, you're talking about, you know, yeah. 2,500, 3,000 <clears> versus, you know, 800 to 1,200, right? I mean, it's, it's a big difference because you would have had to refinish the other floor also at the same time. Um, so, yeah. you know, and you got to have the capital for that, which is it's its own problem. Sure. But one exactly. more time for the people in the back. I mean, option A is literally pull out the more expensive material and put the cheaper right. one down because the continuity of space is more important in this case. Is there a bit in the back there too? Past that yes. Thing? So yeah. that's the thing. Is so now this is just going... a is an island floating in the middle of a sea of cheaper flooring. <laughs> exactly. You have nice white oak finish. You have your granite countertops, um, slab. 
you have your nice cabinets um, that are actually a third stained color of wood um, for our audience. And yeah. then you have a dining room on the other side that's also that cheap laminate, which like I said, isn't a bad material and it was well laid, but this in the and middle. now we've got so, three types of wood within, I mean, an inch of ice. All in, so, in one view. So yeah. here's another view by itself. This hardwood looks great. Um, the kitchen looks great, but look, you know, look in the other way. You're standing on one kind of wood and you look across and it's another. Um, so, and the kitchen by itself looks great. But again, you know, you're, you're making these decisions and you saved probably $1,500 to $2,500, right? Mm -hmm. And now to be fair to Ben, our homeowner, he made that decision a couple years before, right? Okay. And yes, this wasn't a prep for sale kind of decision. So, so it wasn't necessarily a prep for sale. I mean, they were thinking, ah, I'm not going to be here forever, but it was just, it was okay with them to do this. Um, this is probably the most, you know, obvious one here or, or one of the most obvious ones. Um, so I'm just, I'm flipping back and forth between the photos here. So they made this, this $2,500, maybe let, let's even round up to a $3,000 savings, right? And it probably translated to a 10 or $15,000 uh, flip side value yeah. on the other end, because it would have categorized the main floor of this home, which is all hard surfaces um, to a next level and yeah. completely next level. And I've sold multiple homes this summer in this neighborhood um, within a mile or less uh, for, with multiple offers. And uh, we've, we've gotten them bid up competitively for similar square footage, 650 to 680. So I'm not talking crazy numbers here. We could have bid this up potentially if there was this was taken care of as well as one other thing, you guys have all seen it. I won't even show the picture because um, most of you guys are just listening, but um, they replaced the carpet and rather than spend $1,500 on doing some tile in the master bathroom, they continued to have the tile outside of, um, in, in the master bathroom uh, for the, uh, like you literally step out of the shower and you walk onto carpet. So there's no hard surface there. So people oh, don't like that either. Deeply offensive um, to me and my. So here's the thing. He had to move, didn't have a lot of time. Yeah. It wasn't, gonna, <clears throat> it wasn't in the budget to change. So we listed the home for 625. He did the things he could change and totally followed our, our instructions, did everything um, we asked of him within the time frame and the budget that allowed. And we went from 600, he spent 10 to $12,000. We actually ended up in contract, uh, we're gonna close here in another few weeks, um, in contract for 5K over with some nice concessions nice. because of the market. Mm -hmm. And we were able to negotiate those and kind of push it up. We ended up at 630. So 5K over the list price, $630,000. The client is super happy. But you better believe dollars to donuts. I'm not coming at him from an attack standpoint, but he hires me to tell him things that, uh, you know, let's let's be real. Sure. Uh, I, I'm not into having niceness contests. I'm going to be uh, in a in a, a caring and sensitive way because I have a yeah. relationship. Yeah. I told him exactly what was wrong with this house and exactly why we ended up at 6:30 instead of 6:50, and he knew exactly what to expect, and that's exactly how it played out. So Absolutely. I didn't, I didn't, um, dance around the fact that this was ideal. We just made it, Hey, this is what we have. So that's why we priced it at 625 instead of basically we could have gone in at 650 if we could have done some of these other things. Yeah. But here's the issue. If it would have been heartbreaking and the biggest reason why we didn't do it, number one was time because he did have to move. Um, but number two is it would have cost after the fact, especially in a, in a short time frame. we would have had to pay our uh, uh, person a premium, uh, like our contractors and that sort of thing. Sure, um, yeah. It would have cost a premium to, we would have had another ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 to fix what he did in the previous year or two when he just made the decision of, oh, okay, this looks nice, I like it, it works. Sure. So, and then your return on investment isn't there anymore. Exactly. You, you chomped out of it, but 
So this is a few things, right? We're talking about flooring. Uh, this is not a flooring episode, guys. This no, is, it's not. This is an example that we're laying out there of how if we could jump in our HG Wells time machine, we could fly back uh, a couple of years. If we had put this on the table for him, not as, oh, it's it's 2,000 extra bucks to do this, it was probably like, oh, well, I don't need that. But when you look at it in the frame of, okay, what am I going to, what am I doing to the value right. of my house when I make these changes? Um, and I think a lot of people just don't have these conversations because they don't know who to ask or, uh, right. you know, I don't want to call up my real estate agent. They're going to make money on me doing this, but right. um, a great agency, actually, this is kind of part of the cost of doing business. We keep, uh, uh, there's a, there's a, a community that you have of people who trust you for advice. Right. You're not looking to get a check written every time you talk to them. Um, but then there's also the interior de design component. And sure. um, I, again, interior design, I talked to some people, it sounds like a luxury item. It sounds like the kind of thing that you get when you have so much money to spend. It's like, ah, oh, it's like a personal shopper or something like that. We could even peel into that because personal shoppers can save right. you money too. But the big thing is, is that these are concepts, you know, you can go online, you can watch a YouTube video, DIY your flooring. Um, if you want to save money, there are ways to do that. We could get into the pros right. and cons of taking on jobs. Um, but when it comes to making decisions that are going to impact the value of your home, um, this thing is very, you know, homes are very valuable. So when you go in right. and make a change, it's not just dollars to dollars. I spent a thousand bucks. I'm going to get a thousand bucks more when I sell my house. Um, these have larger reaching implications on the totality that it's the big picture of, um, like you were saying, continuity in the house has been broken by this decision. And maybe it was broken before. Maybe it was, you know, maybe he also got a deal on the house because it had old shag carpets in those areas where there's now hard flooring. And that is an improvement. Um, sure. But I think if you had flown back in time and told him five years ago, hey, by the way, if you spend that extra three grand and you go ahead and get this nice white ash wood all the way through, I'm going to get you another 10 to 15 when we go to get on the back this thing unloaded exactly. because it's not going to look like it's been pieced together. And a lot of people exactly. want to attack projects room by room, right? Right. So that's probably what happened here. Someone improved this room, that room, right. the other room. Right. Um, and it seems cheaper because, you know, when you pull up flooring and you do paint at the same time, for example, you know, certain things can get cheaper. Yes, mm -hmm. because it's we don't have to be as uh, cautious around the, the old stuff. And then we work our way down to the floor. Um, but the reality is that Flooring is a great example, having a continuity throughout uh, a single floor or something that we make sure still matches cabinetry in different rooms. Um, right. It can have a big yeah. difference in the in the completion of the house, the feeling that, exactly. that this was a well thought up complete project and not just uh, we patched here and there. And, and now the house is a mix of 90s and 2000s. Right. So I'm going to tell you, uh, I, I'm going to tell you a secret. Um, and our audience is secret here, which is, I mean, it's not really a secret. We just, we kind of have fun <laughs> with it within my agency. Um, the, the, the cost to bring in our in-house designer, um, project manager, she, she's a designer. She, uh, is really a project manager, all designers. That's really what they are. Um, and then from the point of picking everything, uh, that matches, that complements, making good choices, uh, making them uh, the the components fit what you're trying to do. Is this a long term? You're going to own it for ten years and then sell it, or is it you know two years so you can be a little more um, in style, but you're going to sell it in a shorter period of time? All of those different concepts. It would have cost probably about five hundred bucks to have her go out and basically two years ago pick everything: colors, flooring, um, tile you know, all of the different things that they were thinking about doing from a color, from a texture, from a finish standpoint, from a durability standpoint, she would have picked all of that stuff for them and with them based on what they liked and, and so on. Um, she would have done that for probably about $500, but here's the secret. Okay. And this is what I figured out within the real estate sales side is we don't actually call her a designer, generally speaking, because no one wants to pay a designer. They all think that's for rich people. <laughs> what do I get out right? of it? What do I get, yeah, Rob? Uh, I, there's nothing physical wants... in my hands at the end of that it, transaction. Exactly. So what we just say is generally speaking, when we're hiring somebody to do this, um, and, and there's different facets of this, but actually 90% of the time, I don't call her my designer. I call her my in-house project manager. Sure. Mm -hmm. And because people have no problem because they know that they can't handle the logistics of a reno. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which by the way, is one of the legitimate benefits of an interior designer. I think people exactly. don't realize at all. And right. managing these projects is 
It's a bitch. It's it's a lot uh, to chase tail <laughs> exactly. for you know while you're trying to work your full time job. Yeah, it's it's huge. So uh, the project management is way bigger than the actual picking of the materials. Um, that's that's literally a few hours at the beginning of the job. Um, mm -hmm. Really, the the work is on the back end of of making sure it's coordinated, making sure it works for the right um, timeframes, and and so on. Uh, so we just call her. Oh, we'll bring in our project manager, and she'll handle it. And she also at the same time coordinates all of the subcontractors and timing and, and everything else that goes through the process. And we do this, this is the person that can add huge value. And we just maybe added $500 to the, uh, to the project. And by picking the right things and getting her in at the right time, uh, you know, you might've added yeah. 25 to $50,000 worth of value for what, three, $4,000, maybe at the most. Yeah. Um, so the point is, is that's how you leverage and that's how you get to, uh, you know, get these two, three, four, five X of your investments, yeah. um, by just being smart, literally, they already had to spend the 10 to 12. If they would have spent two to three, maybe four in the last previous years, that two to three was the big pivot. It yeah. wasn't and the 10 to it's 12. It's a great example too, because it's. This isn't about like color matching. I think a lot of people think I have an eye for design or I've got, sure. you know, I've got a style. I don't want someone to come in and tell me to do a different style. That's not really oh, what by the way, designer does anyway. By the way, you don't. You I don't. promise you. Yeah. You, don't. Yeah. <laughs> you can't look at a hundred different shades of gray and pick, <laughs> pick the two from yeah. a swatch. I, yeah. I promise you, you can't do it. Yeah. You know, and this, this matched, I mean, those, that flooring matched that fireplace. All right. I mean, it wasn't, yeah, it was great. It wasn't awful, but it took putting it in to step back and then see, like we said, there was within that picture, there was a little square. I could see three different, very, very different shades and more importantly, tones sure. of wood. Right. Um, and that's the thing you can't, uh, you can't know what you don't know until you've gone and spent the money and made that mistake. And that's, that's the, wonderful thing about interior designs is that, uh, you know, she's gone to school for this to study yep. the common mistakes, the, the errors right. that are very, very easy to make for anyone, even for a professional, um, and then learn how to avoid those and, um, you know, maybe take some, some data that you wouldn't necessarily right. take to the store with you. Right. So hire the right people in, in summing this up, um, hire <laughs> the right people, right. Uh, play the long game Current theme for us here. Yeah. Remember we're playing check, uh, not chess, I mean, I'm yep. sorry, not checkers. We're playing chess and know that everyone's playing chess. Even if they think they're playing checkers, it's just because they don't know they are. So yeah. think three, four or five moves ahead and bring in the right people. Um, make smart decisions, people. That's, yeah. that's really, that's really what we're asking. Come on, audience, make live smart. deliberately. Exactly. There you and go. And your, so, your house is one of is, it is your biggest investment most typically. And it's worth the time and then a little bit of extra uh, cost. To, to make a difference. Um, you know, in this case, exactly. this person would have spent another 500 bucks maybe, but potentially, um, made well more than that back in just a few years. So. Exactly. So, okay. There you go. Love it. Thank All you. Right. Thanks so much for your time today, guys. We'll catch you next week on the get rich slow podcast. Have fun out there. Awesome.